Well, Dan, Gary Ridgeway remains locked up here at the Green River Task Force headquarters, and it was here that detectives secured his confession. They interviewed him for months, always in teams of two, and to overcome his insatiable desire to control and manipulate, they developed a very clever plan. Sometimes you have to be uh, the best friend in the world to the person that you absolutely hate and despise. That's the key investigators use to unlock the secrets of a serial killer. For five months, detectives spent hundreds of hours talking to Gary Ridgway, every moment captured on tape. Definitely in the beginning, he lied to us. But as the days wore on, detectives took note of Ridgway's changing mood. Sometimes he would be uh, a little upset. Sometimes he'd be uh, pleased if he, if he got a specific meal, for example, that he uh, desired for that night for dinner. The moods were key. If Ridgway was happy, investigators got more out of him. So they needed a carrot, something to get him to confess to the murders they'd been unable to tie him to. It, it was a, uh, an eerie feeling, I guess is a way to, to describe it. These field trips to Ridgway's old body dump site became his reward. He, he enjoyed it, and uh, that was hard for us. The trips raised a terrible dilemma for investigators. In his confession, Ridgway says he frequently returned to these places to revel in his work. And we were the ones taking him back to the site. It was something he liked to do. But we knew that if he was happy, usually we would get a little more information out of him, too. It worked. Ridgway led detectives to the remains of four women. Guilty. And confessed to murdering 48. Yesterday I thought we would feel really good about what happened, but uh, it's been really painful. For detectives and prosecutors, the months of interrogation came with a price. Their years of experience could not prepare them for what they heard, could not prepare them for the clinical way this killer described his deeds. It was, it was chilling, it was incredibly disturbing, and he seemed completely oblivious. You know, all of the people you saw in that story are very seasoned investigators. They've investigated or prosecuted hundreds of murders, hundreds of crimes, and it is incredible that all of the details that they've heard over the last several months have really gotten to them personal. It has very, very, it has been very difficult for them to listen to. And they may have to listen to more. As I said, Gary Ridgway is still here. He won't be sentenced for maybe six months. And in that meantime, they hope he will continue talking to them, hope he will continue to reveal new crimes. In Seattle, Liz Roca, Como 4 News.